Man, it was like 60 degrees yesterday. What is this? for you it was like 65 and sunny yesterday and uh, today we've gotten like three inches of snow already <sighs> man it is days like today where I'm so glad I have a heated garage to work in today we are going to quickly rinse off the Cayman so we can keep working on it in the last video um, I took you guys through the process of making a big foam wing for the back end there and it's just sitting right here. And today we're going to be playing with this big sheet of aluminum. We're going to be cutting uprights to hold that wing. Okay, while the Cayman thaws out from all that snow, let's go over the entire game plan for this project today. I'm going to basically uh, kind of go through everything just like I did in the last video. We're gonna kind of go through the tools that I've acquired and gathered for this project here. We're gonna kind of go through the mindset and the, uh, the game plan uh, from start to finish. And then we'll kind of just start tackling it and uh, figuring it out along the way. Uh, again, just like the last video, and the next video, I've never done anything like this before. I've just kind of done some reading online, found some other hobbies that have the same kind of skills and products, and uh, kind of pieced it all together. So we're just gonna figure it out together today. So first things first, I have this pattern right here. This pattern was actually included in the box that my uh, base came in. So when I ordered this RS style wing base from Getty Design, um, I told him that I was gonna be attempting to make my own uprights, like custom aluminum ones, and he just like sent me this pattern, which I assume is the RS style upright. I haven't verified that, but uh, I assume that's what it is. So basically, uh, we're gonna try to make this ourselves out of aluminum, uh, because we already have the template. Um, if this goes really, really good, we may make our own custom ones with like my mountain logo, instead of uh, these triangles, something like that. Uh, but that's what we're gonna be making today out of aluminum. So first piece of material slash equipment slash stuff that we needed to buy was um, some MDF. Now this is quarter inch MDF. Basically I got this to make a template. This is just kind of like a cheap uh, cardboard, kind of like cereal box stuff. So it's very flimsy. So I got this MDF and I basically traced this out as you can see. And I cut it out with a jigsaw. So jigsaw is part of the tools uh, that we needed. And I basically got this point. Which brings me to the next tool that we have here. And this is a normal router. Uh, this one right here is a Porter cable router that I borrowed from my uncle. But I did buy some special like CNC spiral upcut bits um, that everybody said was really good for like CNC like MDF. I picked three of these bits up at Harbor Freight for like eight bucks. Uh, so we'll, we will see how long they last. Uh, I don't really have high hopes, I'm hoping that one can do the job, but if that's not the case, I have two more. So you can see the, uh, the extra two bits right here. These are quarter inch uh, spiral upcut carbide steel or something like that. Uh, so they should do pretty good. The other tool that we're using right now is some clamps, just to make sure that the aluminum plate doesn't move around. Um, I guess the aluminum, I went down to Salt Lake City and went to like a uh, metal supply shop or whatever and this was one of the scrap pieces they had laying around. So it is two feet by four feet wide and it's about three sixteenths of an inch thick and um, I'm pretty sure that that's going to be plenty thick and it's not going to move around once we attach it here to the side of the base. It's not going to like rattle back and forth. The last set of tools that we're going to need are some drill bits and that's just so we can drill out the holes um, so that we can actually bolt everything together. Oh, and then one last tool. I just got this in the mail today. This is a set of brass router bushings. Basically, this makes it so that uh, this little part of the bushing rubs against your template so that the bit doesn't cut into your template. That was one last tool that I needed to pick up in order to do this project. You can see it right there. Basically that rubs against the MDF and the bit only touches the metal. 
So we just went over all the tools that I have acquired for this section of the project. Um, ignore all the other tools, that's all for the carbon fiber and the foam from the last video. But basically this video right here is basically coming down to just the router. Um, if any of you have ever researched CNC machines, basically it's a, a router bit just like this that goes and takes a thin layer of metal off each pass and eventually will cut through it. Um, so my game plan with this is to go as slowly as possible. That way I get a nice precision cut all the way around and also we, <clears throat> you have a higher chance that the bit is not going to break. So my game plan is to go a six, a 32nd of an inch each pass and this is 3 16 so that is six passes theoretically if my math is correct uh, and then we should be cutting it out. To show you guys what I'm talking about, if you look right here, I already did a, a really, really quick, rough, like test cut just to see if my, my uh, tools are gonna actually do the job. That is a 1 32nd cut into the aluminum. So you can see it's gonna be very, very slow process, but I think it's gonna turn out good. Oh yeah, safety first. Okay, so I'm gonna start cutting, so you gotta go upstairs. Oh, come on. Sorry buddy, go upstairs, it's gonna be really loud. Okay, back to work here. So there's not much more to go over as far as tools and process go, really we just gotta get down to it. So uh, if any of you have never routed anything, it's really annoyingly loud. So I have uh, like some headphones here instead of some earplugs, they, they do the job. Okay, so you guys, update, quick update. We almost made it all the way around. We started right here and uh, we kind of ended right there uh, because the bushing that we were using just completely shattered and pieces went everywhere. Also, the bit is like filling up with aluminum um, and also the line we're making isn't really that clean. So I have to kind of rethink this because I don't have any more of these little bearing things. Um, hmm. Okay, so I'm thinking instead of actually doing the router, um, because routers really aren't made to CNC, I've kind of, I can see like there's some aluminum buildup inside that bearing there. Uh, I think I'm gonna do a quick run to Home Depot to see if they have little metal cutting blades, like really fine tooth blades for the jigsaw and uh, we'll kind of give it a go. Uh, I think I'm gonna swap the blades of the jigsaw and see if I can't cut the aluminum out the same way. So uh, I guess I'll see you guys at Home Depot. So here we are at Home Depot. I brought my jigsaw blade here that I used for the MDF. Um, I found these ones right here that are made for metal, although I'm trying to distinguish the difference between the two. This one looks like they're bigger teeth. This one looks thinner teeth. I'm kind of leaning more towards the thinner teeth just so uh, we go a little bit slower with the jigsaw and it's a little bit more precise. Um, so I think I'm gonna go with these. And there's three of them too, so if I break one, then I have two more. So, yeah, let's do it. Is that your toy? Yeah. Can I get it? What is that? Do you know what that is? It's a Fuego Orbital Reciprocating Saw. Duh. Actually, I'm gonna get a second pack too because I have a feeling that uh, we're gonna go through all these. So let's buy two packs. And we are back. Okay, so we gotta put the router away because obviously we're not using it for this project. We've come to learn that uh, we probably have the wrong technique to be honest, but uh, in this situation, it's not, not really gonna work. But we have the jigsaw right here ready to go. So let's get the new saw installed and do a little teeny test cut probably here on the corner uh, just to make sure that that's gonna work. So we got the new saw blade installed, so let's give a little bit of a test cut. I'm gonna go extremely slow at first, but let's try it out. Wow, I think that's actually gonna be way faster than doing the routing. Uh, I'm glad I bought six though, because it's probably gonna get pretty dull, but all right, let's start cutting it out. You 
guys, you're never too old to learn something new. I learned something new today. Uh, simpler is better. I thought about the jigsaw idea first, and then I was like, you know what? I'm gonna try to mimic the computer CNC machines and do it all fancy with the bit. This is just way, way easier. Okay, so quick update here. We've been sawing for like 45 minutes and we've gone through two saw blades so far. So I'm really glad I grabbed two packs, six of them. We're almost done. I only have this little section here, about five inches left to go. And then uh, we gotta drill the holes to bolt it on and then I'll show you guys what it looks like on the car. I am extremely stoked for this. Let's throw it on the car so you guys can see what it looks like. So I think this thing turned out amazing considering we did it all by hand and it was kind of trial and error type, uh, type thing. Like I said, the finish of it is not perfect. I need to definitely clean it up and uh, get all the edges rounded, like I said. We still have one more to make for the driver's side right there. I'm gonna throw you guys on a quick time lapse because you already saw how this one was made and I'm gonna whip that one up uh, just like this. Okay, so here is the finished product. We'll Almost finished. I still have a little bit more filing to do and I think I'm gonna sand them down a little bit more. I may paint them black, still not sure about that. But basically, check it out guys. We have two matching aluminum uprights, technically handmade, custom, even though they're from a pattern that you can just buy them. But uh, I had a blast making these. It was definitely, um, an adventure. It was significantly cheaper to make these than to buy them, but uh, that's also because I had a lot of the tools already, so if you're buying everything from scratch, probably be a little bit easier just to buy them. Um, but I enjoyed making these by hand, and I probably am gonna make some more that are even more custom, probably a little bit higher, um, something like that, but more to come on that. But let's check out what these things look like mounted onto the wing base. So that right there is what I'm talking about. These things are rock solid. They're not going anywhere. The next thing I need to make are little aluminum mounts that will mount to the actual wing. Uh, but pretty much this is a successful project. I think only took me a few hours. Uh, really the longest part of the project was kind of trial and error part, trying to figure out how to actually cut these things. I'm glad I figured it out, the jigsaw worked. So there we go, that is a successful project in my book. Hopefully you guys learned something here. I mean, you can take these uh, principles and kind of go and make really anything out of aluminum, whether it be an exterior piece or an interior piece, whatever. That's why I like working on things hands-on. So now I have the skills necessary to make things out of aluminum if that need ever arises. But guys, stay tuned for more videos on that wing. The last video I posted had that like foam core wing. Uh, the next video is probably gonna be where we pull out some carbon and some resin, we do some vacuum bagging. Um, that's the part I'm really, really worried about. Fingers crossed that that works. But I guess I will see you guys in the next video. Again, thanks for watching. Click subscribe if you want to stay tuned for that carbon wing. Peace.